Good day, class. Today, we're going to go through some of the even numbered problems from unit 36. Um, in this particular unit, uh, it's entitled General Simple Formulas, so they're rather a mix of uh, equations. So let's get started with problem two. Problem two is referring to this diagram here. It says the motor shown takes 38 amperes on a 220 volt circuit. Find the horsepower output of the motor shown with an efficiency of 90%. So that's the motor's efficiency. Express the answer to the nearest hundredth. And the formula for um, current is given here. So we're actually trying to solve for the power output uh, in horsepower. So what we should do is probably take the given equation and isolate HP in that equation. So I've written it here. In order to isolate HP, we can start by doing that cross multiplication. So um, then of course, we get uh, the fact that E times I times the efficiency is equal to 746 multiplied by the horsepower. So now, in order to isolate HP, we would simply divide by 746. So we're gonna get the following. We're gonna get E times I times the efficiency divided by 746 will give us the power output in horsepower. Okay, so let's just go ahead now and substitute the voltage value, it's here as well as in the language, but it's 220 and the current is 38. So we'll be substituting those uh, quantities right here. So again, it's 220 multiplied by 38. All right, and the other quantity that we have to substitute here is the efficiency, and the efficiency in this case is 90%. So uh, we will be multiplying here by 90%, which means 90 out of 100, and of course is the same as 0 0.9. All right, so uh, I'm gonna do this in steps because when we multiply 220 by 38, that's E times I, that represents the input power. So with your calculator, you can do that and you'll get 8360. So this is now equal to 8360 times 0.9 and divided by 746. Okay, so if the question had asked you, what is the input power? This would be your answer, 8360 watts is the input power. Okay, now if we take that value and multiply it by 0.9, we will now get 7524. Okay, so that's 90% of the input power. So what does it represent? It actually represents the output power, again, in watts. Okay, so this value, 7524, is the output power in watts. And then finally, when we divide that number by 746, we will have the output power, but in the unit horsepower. Okay, so when we carry out that division, I'll show you this one. Uh, with the calculator. So we have 7524 divided by 746. Okay, and uh, we're asked to round to the nearest 100th. So this would be 10.09. And 
that would be the output power in horsepower. Okay? So once again, we took the original equation and we isolated HP. Okay, when you multiply E by I, you get 8360 watts, which is the input power. After multiplying it by 0.9, you get 7524 watts, which is the output power. And then when you divide it by 746, you get that same output power, but in the unit horsepower. And we're dividing by 746 because every one horsepower is equal to 746 watts. And this is something we reviewed uh, in a previous uh, lesson. Okay, let's go on to number four. Number four gives us this uh, formula here and it asks us to find the resistance. Find the resistance of 240 feet of number 10 copper wire with a cross-sectional area of 10,380 circular mils. Okay, so uh, all we need to do is substitute because we're finding the resistance and it is already isolated. So K, and we, we saw this formula in a previous uh, lesson, K, it reminds us, is the constant 10.9, sorry, 10.8, which is specific to copper. L will be the length in feet, so it is uh, 240. And D squared is that cross-sectional area in the unit circular mills, so it is the number 10,380. So all we have to do is put this into our calculator multiplying and then dividing and we're supposed to round to the nearest hundredth and I'll leave you to to do this one rounding to two decimal places you'll find uh, that you get 0.25 and this is resistance so it will be ohms okay I'm going to change to page 192 of your textbook and we'll look at problem six uh, so problem six says, what is the resistance of R1 right here? And um, what we're given are the values for R2, R3, R4, and R total. And of course, R total is the smallest value because this is a parallel connection. So we have this formula to begin with, but in this formula, RT is isolated. So I'll show you how we can rearrange the formula to get a new one for R1. So we can start by writing it like this. One over RT is one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3 plus one over R4. And then from there, we will isolate one over R1. Okay, so in order to do that, we need to move these three terms to the other side. They would be subtracted. Okay, so we would have 1 over RT minus 1 over R2 minus 1 over R3 minus 1 over R4 is 1 over R1, like this. Okay, so all we did was move these three terms. Each addition becomes a uh, subtraction, you can see here. And then finally, this is a formula for one over R1. If we want a formula for R1, it would look like this. One would be the numerator and underneath, we would have the following. Okay, just like that. So if you compare it with the original, okay, you can see the big difference 
would be the three subtraction signs here compared with those addition signs here. And now, of course, uh, what we need to do is put in our values. So our total is 3.2. R2 is 16. Uh, R3 is 12. And R4 is 8. So it looks just like that. And this can be done quite easily with your calculators. I actually showed you on our total calculation in, in a previous lesson. So we just, this is what I do. You can watch the display here. So one divided by, that takes care of the numerator here, and then a bracket. And all four of these things will be in the bracket. So one divided by 3.2 minus one divided by 16 minus one divided by 12 minus one divided by eight, close your bracket, okay? And actually you get 24 ohms. So 24 ohms will be the value for R1. Okay, let's take a look at problem eight. So again, I'll have to move that textbook so that you can see it. Okay, so here is the diagram that accompanies problem eight, and a formula is given as well. They tell you what all of the quantities represent in the formula. Okay, it says the internal resistance of five cells is 1.8 ohms each. So that means these five batteries are each 1.8 ohms. The cells are connected as shown to a two ohm resistor. And we are trying to find the current. So this is the equation for current. Essentially, it's going to be the total voltage uh, divided by the total resistance. Now, NS in the formula represents the number of batteries, so it's five, okay? So I'm gonna change this right away to five times E over five times little r plus capital R. And then the key here is that little r is the resistance of each cell. So it's 1.8. Capital R is this um, external resistor here. Okay, so we end up with five is multiplied here by the voltage 1.5 of each battery. And then in the bottom, we're gonna have five multiplied by 1.8, each of these batteries is 1.8 ohms, plus the external resistance is two. So that should make sense to you. The total voltage is five times 1.5 and the total resistance is the five times 1.8 plus two. Okay, so you might want to first work out this top value. So five times 1.5 gives you 7.5 volts. And then for the denominator, you can do five times 1.8 plus two. And your calculator will handle order of operations. So five times 1.8 plus two, that's correct, it's 11. So the total resistance is 11. And then using, this is basically Ohm's law, total voltage divided by total resistance. And rounding to the nearest hundredth. Okay, so we do um, 7.5 divided by 11 gives us this, and to the nearest hundred, that means two decimal places, so 0 0.68. Okay, so when I do a squiggly like that, it means roughly. So sometimes you'll see me do that when I'm rounding. So 0 0.68, which is calculated current, and this therefore is amps. Okay, so that was problem eight. Um, 
I'm going to be skipping a few of the even numbered problems if I don't find that they're terribly interesting or maybe they're repetitive. So I think actually the next one we'll do is problem 12. So let me get the textbooks established. There we go, so that we can see number 12. 12 is kind of a cool circuit called a Wheatstone bridge. So you can see how the resistors are arranged. And the following is true for this type of arrangement. So the ratio of R1 to R2 is equal to the ratio of Rx to R3. Okay, so this is now a proportion. And essentially, the missing quantity, the quantity we do not know is Rx. Okay, so again, the ratio of this to this equals the ratio of this to this. So we can start by substituting into uh, the formula. So Rx, we don't know, but R3 is 30. R1 is 22. And R2 is 200. So we end up with this proportion and Rx is the unknown here. Okay, so we can solve this using cross multiplication. So I'll multiply in the direction of the variable first and we'll get 200 times Rx is, and now here we do 22 times 30. So this is 660. So Rx then is 660 divided by 200 and you'll find that that's 3.3 ohms. And so now we have the missing quantity for the Wheatstone bridge. Okay, we will do 14. So let me move this up a little like that so we have more room. And we'll take a look at 14. It says, determine the horsepower output to the nearest hundredth of the motor in the circuit shown. Okay, so we have a circuit. Look, there are two resistors, each of 1.4 ohms here. Okay, so we're given this formula. First, this will give us the power, not in watts, but rather in horsepower, because we're dividing by 746. All right, so we're, we just need to take the difference between these two power um, values. So we're gonna substitute basically all of the quantities into this equation. So we will do uh, E times I, which is 220 times 12 minus two times R, okay, so R is 1.4, so two times R is 2.8 times I squared, so 2.8 times 12 squared, like that. Actually, that will give us the power in watts, and then after we divide by 746, then we'll have the power in uh, horsepower instead. Okay, so um, we can take 220 and multiply it by 12 and that'll give us 2640. And then from that, we can subtract um, the 2.8 times 12 squared. Okay, and again, the calculator will handle the order of operations. It'll do the exponents first. So you could just do 2.8 times 12 squared, and that's 403.2. Okay, so we'll finish this up by doing this subtraction in the numerator. 
0.2640 minus 403.2. Okay, so that is 2236.8. So that's the power in watts. And then we'll divide it by 746 to get the power input in the appropriate unit. Okay, so I just take that and divide it by 746. There you go. Okay, so it's just under three. And it's asking us to round to the nearest hundredth. So this is roughly 3.00. Uh, HP. Okay, so that is the input power. And now you see the motor is only 88% efficient. So to calculate the output power, we just take that input power and multiply it by 88%. So here we're going to take the three horsepower. It's still in my calculator. You see, better, better to not clear it. It'll be more accurate. We just have to take that and multiply by 88% or 0.88%, of course, meaning out of 100. So we take the value, here it is, and we just multiply by 0.88 and then we get 2.64. So 2.64 horsepower will be the output. Okay, so not too bad. We just had to use two different formulas um, in problem 14. All right, let's take a look next at 18. So let me move our book so we can see 18. Okay, right here, so I'll read through that with you and then we'll try the problem. So problem 18 reads, a motor takes a current of 27.5 amperes per leg on a 440 volt three phase circuit. The power factor is 0.8, okay? Which is the same as 80%. What is the load in watts? Okay, so they've given us an equation here. And this equation is appropriate because it is a three-phase circuit. That's why the root three is included here at the beginning of the equation. And I just wanna show you, when you're doing problem 17 on your own, it's a two-phase circuit. So the the formula is similar, but instead of square root three here, we have the um, whole number two. And 16, you can see, okay, again, we have a similar um, equation provided, but this is a single phase circuit. And so the constant in the front is just one. Okay, so sometimes the constant is one for a single phase, it's two for two phase, and it's square root three in question 18 because it is a three phase circuit. So I just wanted to um, explain to you those differences. And now we'll solve problem 18. So the equation is given and we're asked, what is the load in watts? So we're solving for power here. It's already isolated, so we simply will be substituting, and implied here is multiplication throughout. So we have to substitute uh, 440 for the voltage. For the current, we're substituting 27.5, and for the power factor, this 80%, 0.8. Okay, and you just can multiply all of those quantities together. Um, so I'll find some place to put the calculator to show you that, okay? The multiplication here, so square root three multiplied by 440 
and 27.5 and 0.8. And that's the answer there. They're saying round to the nearest whole watt. So round to the nearest one, that would be um, the position here of the six. The two beside it is not five or more, so this will remain a six. So we end up with 16,766 watts in problem 18. Okay, so let's continue with 22. Okay, so let me get a set up here for good viewing. There we go. So problem 22 says, if a 25 horsepower motor takes 96 amperes at full load and the motor efficiency is 90%, what is the terminal voltage? Okay, now, this is the formula that uh, we're going to be using for this problem. Um, this actually is the same formula um, that we used in number two. Okay, so uh, the very same formula. And it's also, let me just show you, on the previous page, they provide the formula to you and they say to use it for problems 20 through 22. Okay, so that's where I've obtained the formula from. All right, and now let's simply go ahead and solve uh, problem 22. Now, what are we solving for? Terminal voltage. So we're solving for E in this equation. So we need to rearrange it first. So we can cross multiply. So we know that 746 times HP is E times I times the efficiency. And to find E, we have to divide by both current and efficiency. So we end up with 746 times HP divided by I and the efficiency. That will give you your formula for E, okay? So we do our formula manipulation and then we're all set. I have to just substitute the three quantities and then I can figure out uh, the voltage. Okay, so um, the power given uh, in the question is 25. So we're going to take 746 and multiply it by 25. And then we're going to divide that by the current, which is 96. Um and also the efficiency, which is 90% or 0 0.9, okay? So you can either first work out the top and the bottom and then do the division, or you can do it all in one step. So there are a number of ways you can do this, okay? So I can show you if you if you wanted to do it all in one step. You do the top, 746 times 25. Okay, you can push equals. So now you wanna divide by 96, but you wanna also uh, divide by 0.9. So you could either type in now, divided by 96, divided by 0.9, or you could do divided by, in a bracket, 96, times 0.9, okay? So we're dividing by the product of 96 and 0.9. And uh, there's the answer right there, okay? And uh, we would be making sure we round to the nearest hundredth uh, as instructed. So that would be 215.86. All right.
right? So that's rounded correctly to the nearest hundredth, right? The um, five is the number of interest. Beside it is a six, so the five does indeed round up. And uh, don't forget, you've just calculated voltage, so don't forget your unit. And that would be question 22. Let's do 24. Okay, so in problem uh, 24, we've got an AC source, okay? And that's why this is the formula of interest. Okay, so once, once you have um, an AC circuit, and the question is asking you to find the impedance, which is Z. And we are given 5.5 ohms of resistance. So that's the R is 5.5. And 8.2 ohms reactance. So that's X. X is reactance. Okay, so problem 24. Again, we've got the formula given here. We're told to use this for both problems 23 and 24. So here's the formula. We just have to know that the R value, that means resistance. So we've got 5.5 squared plus, and reactance is the X value, 8.2 squared. And the impedance is the longest side of the right triangle. Okay, it, it represents total opposition to current in the circuit. Okay, that's why it will be larger than the resistance and larger than the reactance because it represents total opposition to current in the circuit. So it would include opposition to current provided by resistors, inductors, and capacitors. Okay, so we're going to punch this in now correctly. So you can do it a few different ways and I'll just show you one possibility, okay? So we can do 5.5 squared plus 8.2 squared. We can push equals. Okay, so that's the number under the square root sign. And now we wanna take its square root. So just hit square root equals. And you get your answer. We wanna round to the nearest hundredth, so 9.87. And ohms would be the correct unit for um, resistance, reactance, and impedance. All quantities are measured in ohms. Oh, did I put, oh yeah, 5.5 and 8.2. 5.5 and 8.2, I put in the right quantities, right? Okay, good. Let me just try that again. 5.5 squared plus 8.2 squared is, and then square root, yeah, 9.87. Okay, perfect. Let's go on to problem 26. So problem 26, right up here. If a current of four and a half amperes exists, what is the impedance of a circuit having a voltage of 110 volts across it? Okay, so what are we given? We are given the current value and it is 4.5 amps. What else are we given? The impedance, so remember that's Z. And that is 100 and, oops. Nope, I'm wrong. We're trying to find the impedance. We are given the voltage. Sorry about that, let me just fix that. So yes, we're given the current. What is the impedance? So that is what we're trying to find. And we have the voltage given of 110. Okay, so this question is pretty basic and actually we reviewed it in a previous lesson as well. This is simply Ohm's law. If you wanna know the impedance, 
you're simply going to do E divided by I. So in this case, you're going to take 110 and divide it by four and a half. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. 110 divided by 4.5. So here is the impedance um, for the problem and the rounding to the nearest hundredth. So this would be 24.44. And uh, that is going to be ohms. Okay, so that's um, perfect for number 26. 28. Uh, question 28 is here, so let's read it. It says, a three-phase, three-wire circuit delivers 175 amperes at a voltage of 220 with a 0.85 power factor. What is the kilowatt load to the nearest hundredth? Okay, so remember, this was the power formula for a three-phase circuit, the one with the root three uh, in the front of it. And we just looked at this formula in problem 18. So this question is asking us to use the very same formula. So let's get started. We're going to substitute a current of 175. So that's I. Right here. And we're going to substitute um, uh, the voltage right here of 220. And 0.85 is the power factor that we'll be substituting here. So let's, let's get started. So again, the uh, voltage value is 220. The current value is 175. And the power factor is 0 0.85. So let's go ahead and carry that out first. So multiplication of all of those quantities. So square root three times 220 times 175 times 0.85. And we get this right here. So I'm going to write that down for us. And we're gonna get 56,681. Okay, I've rounded to the hundredth. And that would be watts, right? When we use the formula, we get power in watts. Now the question though is asking us for the kilowatt load. So all we wanna do is convert this quantity, which is in watts, to kilowatts. So you know that that just means um, dividing by a thousand. And so when we do that, okay, so the decimal moves three to the left, we're gonna get 56.68 kilowatts. And again, I have um, shown the rounding to the nearest hundredth. So that's the only difference in problem 28, the fact that they're asking for the quantity in kilowatts instead of watts. So the very same formula can be used, but just then convert from watts to kilowatts, which I know you've reviewed earlier in this course. Okay, we are just gonna do two more problems together. So let's go ahead and look at question 32. Okay, so question 32, this is a formula we've already seen before. We are going to be calculating the current. So all we wanna do is rearrange the formula such that current is isolated. So first the cross multiplication. Okay, so 
Okay, and then if you want the current by itself, you must divide by both E and the efficiency. So we end up with 746 multiplied by the number of horsepower. And then we will divide by both E uh, and by the efficiency in order to get the current. That's all there is to it. So now we can go ahead and substitute. We're substituting 220 for E, 5 for HP, and 0.8 for the efficiency. like that. Okay, so then again, if you want to work out the top first and the bottom first, you can and then divide or we can do it all in one step, 746 times five. And now I either do like this, divided by 220 and divided by 0 0.8, okay? And there's my answer. Or 746 times 5 divided by, in a bracket, 220 times 0 0.80. So either way, of course, we'll get the same result. This will be 21.19 amps. Okay, so that's uh, problem 32. And we'll do one more, question 34. We'll do that one together as well. Now, in question 34, they actually are providing um, two formulas, one for current. We know this formula well from our last lesson, right? Power is voltage multiplied by current, okay? And um, we can use this formula as well in problem 34. And this, of course, is the cross-sectional area here. And um, K is that 10.8. Uh, and N in this problem will be uh, the number of wires. L is the length of the wire. I is the current. And here, this will represent the um, voltage drop. Okay, so let's read the question. What size conductor? So that means solving for the number of circular mills. Okay, it's a two wire system. So N is two, remember K is 10.8. We have a load of 6,500 watts. And we have the L value is 150. Okay. So what we're gonna do first is calculate the current because the current is needed in this formula for the cross-sectional area. So let's begin with this formula here. So we have to take the power and divide it by the voltage. So in this case, we've got a power of 6,500 watts, and we have to divide it by the voltage. It says the voltage at the load is 120. So we start with this calculation. Okay, so you're gonna take 6,500 um, to begin with and divide it by 120 and this gives you take a look here 6500 divided by 120 this number 54.16 repeated okay so i'm going to write it down like this okay and the unit here is going to be amps 
So we put the dot over this six to show that that's a repeated digit. And now we can go to our other formula here for cross-sectional area in circular mills. Again, we can substitute 10.8 for the constant associated with copper. N represents the number of wires and it's a two wire system. So this is times two. L is the length of the wire. It's 150 feet from the generator. So that quantity in feet goes here. The current we just determined, it's 54.16 repeated. And in the denominator should be that um, voltage drop and it says the voltage drop should not exceed 2.5 volts so that would go here so to get our final answer we just have to do the multiplication in the numerator i should have left this quantity here look so there's my 54.16 repeated okay so i'm going to multiply it by 10.8 and by two, and by 150. Okay, so that's my numerator now. And I'm gonna divide it by 2.5. And we get our answer, 70200. So that represents the size of the conductor and this would be in circular mills. Okay, if the question asked you for the diameter in mills instead, well then you know you would just take the square root of this quantity in order to determine that. Okay, all right, so um, I think that gives you an idea of what the unit is like and I've covered uh, almost all of the different types of problems, but what I would like for you to do is to go through and solve all of the odd numbered problems now. Okay, so you can do all the odd numbered problems. Remember to check your answers in the back of the textbook. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to send me an email message. Okay, thanks so much and enjoy your day.